People don't dive headfirst into abusive relationships. I mean, who would do that? Instead, they relinquish their lives an inch at a time as they become more entrenched in the relationship. Abusive relationships often begin as incredibly intense and passionate love affairs. Their abusers hold themselves back until they gain their partner's trust and love. And then, little by little, the mind games, manipulation, controlling, and emotionally abusive behaviors intensify. So what do you do? How do you untangle yourself from this mess without losing your sanity? In this video, I'm going to share some strategies for detaching and removing yourself from a toxic relationship. Oh, and probably the most important, in the last part of the video, I'm going to present you with some questions that will help you determine if your relationship is unhealthy. Those are some tough questions, but they will really help you get to some clarity. So don't go anywhere. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Antonio Borello. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here, I'm a psychologist and relationship coach, and I believe that your happiness depends on the quality of your relationships with the people you love. That's why I make weekly advice videos focused on helping you make your relationships and dating experiences exceptional. So if you're interested in videos that will help you make your love life the best part of your life, start now by subscribing to this channel so that you're not missing anything. Just click the subscribe button and then click on that little bell icon and you'll be good to go. Okay, on to our topic, untangling from an abusive relationship. Recognizing and acknowledging that you're in an unhealthy or an abusive relationship isn't always an easy conclusion to reach. And when you realize what you're dealing with, figuring out the next step can be very difficult. After all, you have feelings for this person and have developed a history with them. But it's the future, not the past, that you should consider. Will you be happy with them? Will you be able to achieve your goals? Will you feel safe? And what happens if the abuse becomes worse? Despite the pressure you might feel from friends and family who encourage you to just break up and move on, we know that it's not always such a simple thing to do. Or perhaps you know that you want to break up, but you may not be ready or it may not be possible to safely leave your abusive relationship at this moment. So how do you prepare to break up? Well, detaching from an abusive relationship usually happens in stages. And sometimes walking through these stages happens quickly, but for some people, navigating through the stages of detachment happens over a period of months or even years. But generally, it starts with detachment stage one. And you'll know that you're in the first stage of detachment when you begin to realize that there is something very wrong with your partner you'll begin to clearly see the red flags that you missed and recognize the cycles of abuse and the constant need to control through imposed isolation or the guilt trips and the emotional projection. You'll probably also begin to recognize that everything wrong with the relationship is not really your fault, despite what he wants you to think. So you'll stop taking the blame for everything. You'll stop taking the blame for everything wrong with the relationship and begin to understand that this person will never give you the relationship that you deserve. In other words, the rose-colored glasses are off and reality finally starts to sink in. Stage two. When you're in stage two of detachment, you no longer have hope for the relationship to improve. And the desire to please your partner has been replaced with resentment and anger. At this point, you are still having feelings for your partner, but the hopes for those for things to improve have kind of disappeared. Signs that you're in stage two of detachment begin with you recognizing that you deserve better. You recognize the manipulative behavior and you're not willing to accept it any longer. Instead, you're fighting back and so the level of conflict in your relationship significantly elevates. In stage two of detachment, your partner is also recognizing a change in you. The manipulations that once worked effectively on you no longer are having the same effect. You are on to his games. Stage three, is all about you. You recognize that the love and obsession you once felt for your partner are gone. In fact, you probably, you're probably repulsed by him. You're also starting to focus more on friends and family and engaging in activities outside of the relationship. And this is also the time when you realize that you've got to find a way to end the relationship. And as you might imagine, your partner also recognizes that you've checked out. So be prepared for the begging and pleading and bargaining to begin. They are likely to give you the fight of your life because they're not done with you yet. So they won't let you go so easily. 
Remember, abusive, controlling people fear abandonment more than anything. So if they get the sense that you're leaving the relationship, they will try to suck you back in. And this is commonly known as hoovering, like hoovering like the vacuum. They will promise you the world to try and suck you back in. Of course they promise to change and they might suddenly start doing things that you've been complaining about for a long time. And when they get frustrated by your lack of a positive response, they may say things like, oh, you're lost without me. You'll never find anyone like me. And followed by more begging and pleading and promises over and over and over. Don't listen. It's just a trick to get you to come back to them out of fear. So I want to talk about the importance of going no contact. When you finally made the decision to leave the relationship, recognize that it's going to be one of the most difficult things you've ever had to do. They will go to great lengths to try to convince you otherwise, and that's why it's important to go the no contact route and have absolutely no contact with this person. That starts by blocking their cell number, block their home number, and try to figure out how to block them from emailing you. Block their social media. You should expect that they are going to show up at your home and probably at your place of business. They're going to try to do everything in their power to get you to talk to them. But don't worry, this is only temporary. Hopefully. Remember, any communication may result in you being hoovered or sucked back in. So block them and have no contact. Step two, no lingering. When you're trying to detach and remove yourself from a relationship, it's likely that you've left clothes or different things at a person's house. And when I say no lingering, that means that you are prepared to leave everything behind and go no contact. Unless those things are absolutely irreplaceable, it's better to forget them than to try to negotiate how you're going to get them back. Remember, they will hold on to whatever they can to keep that last bit of communication open with you. Walk away and forget about that stuff. Property is always replaceable. Things become more challenging if you have children with that person. So the best thing to do is to immediately work out a parenting plan with a qualified therapist or an attorney and make sure that your parenting plan details solid boundaries about time sharing, about financial responsibility, and even the method of contact that's required, such as communication through text or email for both of you. Oh, and yeah, you'll probably have to block his friends as well. If a narcissist or an abusing person believes that they can message, get a message to you or communicate indirectly through another person, a person that's vulnerable to their ideas, they will certainly use that person to get what they want. Number three, remember why you left. After some time passes, it's possible that you're going to begin missing the potential the relationship had. You'll begin thinking about all the good times and not so much about the bad times. That's why it's important that you write down all of the reasons all of the horrible feelings you had while being in a relationship with a manipulative or abusive partner. Make sure you write down the actions, what happened, and try to describe the resulting feelings of dread or disgust and anxiety and fear and anger. Write them down because it will be easy to forget when you're feeling lonely. Remember the things that happened and the times that you were feeling low. The times when you were questioning your worth. Remember the guilt trips and the times that you were being lied to. Write them all down and refer to them when you feel tempted to reach out. These things might save you from a huge headache in the future. Number four, allow yourself time to grieve. Allow yourself the opportunity to grieve the end of the relationship. It's okay to feel disappointed. After all, you probably had high hopes that this relationship would be something great. So that means that you're grieving the person you thought your partner would be. You're grieving because when the relationship ends, the hopes that it could have been something else, something that it wasn't, also ends. So give yourself a break and take the time you need to just be. Don't skip this part. You must walk through these emotions. Don't try to cope by numbing your feelings in drugs or alcohol or even worse, the comfort of a new person. Take your time and breathe. And keep yourself busy doing things for you. When a toxic relationship ends, Many people find that their own needs were put on the back burner. Perhaps you've neglected your friends, your family, your career, your education, or your health. Now is the time to focus on what makes you happy. Focus on what makes you, you. Look, new relationships should be passionate, exciting, and easy. Don't settle for anything less. If you're busy waiting and wondering and worrying about this relationship, 
you just might miss the opportunity to meet the right one. Today, I also have a question for all of you. Are you in a situation or a relationship, but you're questioning whether or not your relationship is toxic or abusive? If so, ask yourself these questions. Number one, do you share values and have similar goals? Or does your partner want to stifle your growth? Does your partner encourage you to pursue your dreams? Number two, do you inspire the best in each other? Do you feel like your best self while in this relationship? Number three, do you trust each other? Number four, do you argue and fight productively? Or do your disagreements spiral into disrespect and hurtful insults? Number five, do you both make the relationship a top priority and make regular investments into the relationship with your time? Number six, do your friends and family approve? That's a big one. Number seven, and do you respect the other person deeply? If you've answered no to one or more of these questions, it would be wise to reconsider your relationship. It might even help to talk to a professional counselor or a therapist who can help you from an unbiased position. And as always, I look forward to hearing or reading your comments and examples of how you've dealt with similar situations in the past. If you found this video helpful, please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to make sure you're not missing any of our weekly updates that will help you make your love life the best part of your life. Thanks for watching till the end. I'll see you in the next video.